Hey everyone. So continuing with what's new in Model Builder and the November updates, in this video I'm going to go over the streaming from SQL Server with Database Loader within Model Builder. So the first thing is in Visual Studio we already have an instance of Model Builder going and I'm using a different data set than we did in the previous video and that's going to be a value prediction use my local environment and here is we can do either from a file or from SQL Server so we need to choose a data source and so I'm going to do all this from scratch and so the data I'm going to use is this wine quality data set from the UCI machine learning repository and if we look at this we actually have we actually have two different files here uh, one for wine quality with red wine and another for white wine and I did mention I'm going from scratch, so I'm in my Azure portal here, and I'm going to create a new instance of Azure SQL. So I just type in Azure SQL and create that. I'm just going to create a single database, tell what subscription I want to do, and I already have a database server, but I can create a new one here if I need to. I'll just keep what I have in a database name. We'll call it one. DB and for the compute and storage we can configure this we have a basic one and I'm just going to go down to one gigabytes because it's going to give us the less cost per month so I'll go ahead and review and create this and this will probably take a few minutes to create all right so this got deployed we'll go to the resource and we're here on the database here we have our server name so we'll copy that and I'm going to use a program called Azure Data Studio, which I haven't seen this talked about too much, but this is a really good tool. If you're working with SQL databases, it's basically a Visual Studio code for database work. And so I'll create a new connection, put in a server, do a SQL login, ML admin, and then I put in my password. And if you do a new connection to an Azure database, you need to actually put your client IP in as a firewall rule and you can do that within this Azure Data Studio here. Thing there, there we go. We have that. Add client IP, click OK. Alright, so now I'm connected and we see we have our WineDB database here. I'll do a new query. We have a database but we need a table to load our data into. So create our wine data table and it's gonna have the wine type as a varchar and all the properties within the file name are going to be decimals and I'll set them to notable. So we'll run this. I created and we can verify with a select statement and we see nothing loaded into the database. So now we need to actually load data from these files into the, this database here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in Visual Studio. I'm going to create a new project. And because I want to learn more about this, I'm using F Sharp console app for this. And I'll just use the default name. All right, so the first thing is let's load in our files here, drag them over, and I will check the properties, make sure they copy over when I build. All right, and I'm going to make a variable here called files. And it's going to be a list. And it's just going to have a list of both of their names one quality red csv and one quality white a csv if you notice we separate with semicolon and f sharp and this is a list if you want an array we just put bars around it and that becomes an array but i'll keep it as a list and since we have multiple files we'll do a loop here for file and files we'll do uh, we'll do something here within this loop. First thing is we need to read in the file data, and we can do that using file dot read all lines. And let me open system dot io for that. There you go. And we pass in our file that we have from our loop here, and that gives us a string array. And now we can get the data from the file. So our file data. We're going to pipe an array that skip one because let's look at the file. The first line here is the header line, so let's just skip that. The next, I'll do an array.map. 
and then it will be a function for each line. I'll do a line that's split and I'll do that on a semicolon. Going back to the file here, it's delimited by semicolons. And let's run this and just see if, if this looks runs correctly. We have an error here. Let is unfinished. You can't end a for loop or uh, a method with just a let. We need to add let's call it a unit, and that's just open and closed empty parentheses there. And just to be sure, we'll do console dot write on our data. We'll put a breakpoint, and we will. We'll run this, so we'll make this startup project. There we go, we have our one bit of data here. So this is one row, then another row, and so on for all lines in this file. So we get the data correctly. So now that we have the data, we need to insert that into our database. And to do that, we can use a NuGet project. And there are a few ways you can communicate with SQL and F -sharp. For this, I'm going to call F -sharp that data that SQL client. Now download that. All right, so we have that. Now we need to tell it our connection string first. So up here above our main method, I'll create a literal variable here. So let connection string, and we'll go back to our portal here. See connection strings. And then we just copy this. And paste it in here. We do need to add our password here. So I do that real quick. And right, so we had the password in and our connection string. Now we can use with the use keyword and insert command. And that'll be a new SQL command provider. And to use this, I will open up F sharp that data. And then here in square brackets. It's going to be our insert statement. So it's going to be insert into our database here. So it's going to be one DB. And the values are going to be all those values there. Paste all of that in. There we go. And then next, that's in the connection string. And then as a parameter, do the connection string again. There we go. Now the cool thing about this and F sharp is it is actually strongly typed. So if this SQL statement isn't correct, if it's using the wrong like number of columns or something, you'll get an actual compiler error, which is one of the cool things about using F sharp and, and its many type providers. So we have our insert statement here. And so we do another loop for each item in our data. We would use our insert command called execute. And oh, sorry, it says this is one data instead of one DB. So now we have access to this execute command. So our first parameter here is this one type. But if you look back at our data, we don't get that in our data set. But because it's specified in each of the file names, we can get that from there. So we create a new variable called one type and we'll do a match on the file contains, if it contains red, we'll match that with true. So if it contains red, we'll just pass it in red. If it is false, we'll say white. And do some indentation. And go. So we, now we have our one type. So we can pass that in as the first parameter. Everything else we have in our, our D variable here from the loop. So we can get the first one. and and what I said about if it's not correct if it's with respect to this command here, it's going to give you an error. And this is saying it takes 13 arguments, but we only have two. And in fact, we look at our choice of parameters. It gives us the names that we used in our SQL statement. That's pretty cool there. So we fill these out. All right, so we have all these filled out here, but we still have an error. So we hover over and it says, I suspect I have a decimal, but we give it a string. And if you remember, back when we created the table, we said all these items are decimals. So it's keeping that strongly typed within our database in here as well. And we can fix this. So let's see, up, up here, we'll create 
an inline function called parse decimal and we'll give it parameter f is going to equal to and we'll use the des decimal dot triparse method on it and f and triparse and f sharp returns a tuple so we can expand that out using parentheses and the first tuple is going to be it's going to be a boolean if it parses correctly we don't need that so we'll do an underscore and then we can do r as our actual parsed out item as our result and then we'll just return that and in f sharp the last statement in a in a method is going to be the return we still have an error here though so it says it doesn't quite know what what type that we're passing in here and because triparse returns in a string we'll strongly type this as a string there you go that works and we just use that for each of these items so that fixes our first one so let me add this to all the other ones there we go we had that no more errors but we have a, a warning here so the result is being ignored what we can do is pipe that into the ignore function and let's in indent this some more all right so that works so let's run this and that should load in our data all right so this is running we can check running our slick statement so we're getting our items here so we'll let this run and we'll come back all right so this ran successfully and let's go to our script run it you see down here we have almost 6500 rows we can definitely do that within our sql script select the count from one data and we'll get that same count we can do some other scripts to figure out some stuff on our data uh, for instance since we have two different types i'd be curious to know what count of each type that we have so if we just select type and then the count from one data and we're going to group by type there you go so we've got a lot more white one items than we do red one items and something else that might be interesting to know is what is the let's see the average alcohol that we have in our our data set here average alcohol percent is ten and a half so it's interesting so we can also do what's the max one 15 percent and then the min is eight percent so and there's tons of other stuff you can do in sql to get some uh, interesting insights on your data but that's just a couple of ones that i had thought about but now we have our data in our database let's go back to our model builder and choose our data source microsoft sql server and it's going to be sql authentication and get our choose our database name here so windb we can test the connection successful and we tell it what table again so it's a wine data table so now it's parsing out the data from our table here and you see it's got the headers like we have in there and when just like usual now we can choose what column we want to predict so it's going to be the quality do the next step we'll train for uh, we'll do a minute here all right so that concluded and we have two models here and the highest r squared is 36 percent but i'm actually curious here go back to my data in the advanced data options and I see some of these things are categorical so maybe type should be categorical so let's change these to numerical okay we'll save that now let's do this training again and see if we get any better results all right they got completed and we got a little bit better results for one thing we got two extra models than we did previously here and we got a little bit better r squared uh, this it's probably going to be a good candidate to have the training go by for a lot longer than a minute. But I'll end things there. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.